It's a big pleasure to be here today. Uh, as Wilte and Virginia said to some of you, uh, my journey started a few years ago in Kona's European Capital of Culture. Uh, at that time, I was uh, a coordinator of one of the programmes that we were implementing in Kona's district. Um, and I remember the meeting uh, that we had with some of you a few years ago in this uh, church, uh, which at the time was still under the heavy reconstruction. And it's really pleasant that today we can meet you and greet you in fully renovated and operational church. Uh, so to this day, we use this church mostly as a cultural event place and also the field and the square besides the church is you know, a massive gathering point for our communities. Um, today we are celebrating rivers and as Wilte already mentioned, um, Kona's uh, European Capital of Culture um, 2022 is implementing a huge program in Kona's district and the whole program is based on communities. And we find it that is the biggest value we are having while implementing European Capital of Culture project because the biggest uh, program is called Contemporary Neighborhoods uh, in which local communities participate with different uh, artists. And the main goal is to prove that small communities and small villages and small neighborhoods a really prestigious uh, prestige place to live. Uh, we are showing the identity of really small communities and the topics uh, in contemporary neighborhood varies from street rock festival to sustainability uh, festival. We have uh, contemporary circus festival, we have uh, poetry festivals, we have community-based musical theater programs and many more to come. Uh, what we did in the first place was uh, a big load of workshops, mostly workshops and workshops and workshops. And coming back to 2019, in the very beginning, the workshops uh, for our community seemed uh, like a place uh, in which they will need to be working in order to create something. And in the very beginning, they said, we kind of don't want to work so much, we would like only to participate in some of the events. Uh, that was the goal of them. And in 2022, today, we can already say that the workshop is the main engine that turns the Kaunas district cultural life, because more and more uh, different cultural initiatives are coming from the communities. And the biggest projects we are, uh, we are having are maintained not by uh, cultural centers and not by municipality itself, but by communities. And we find it uh, a really big value to us. And we try to cherish us, uh, them and to help them in many ways we can. And coming back to rivers, um, as you already have seen, we have the biggest Lithuanian uh, river, Namunas, flowing near the Zapiškis uh, old church. And from 2019, we started thinking of how the river could connect different neighborhoods and different communities. And we decided and we thought of it as a goal to connect two shores of Kaunas district municipality by the river. And while walking today to this church, I, I saw a few ships already passing, and those ships are our municipality ships uh, that local people can use as a transport for their bikes, or just uh, they can use those ships to come to their works from one shore to another shore. And they have a pretty tight schedule, and they travel all day long uh, during the hot season. Well, during the winter, uh, Namunas is not a friendly uh, river for the ships, uh, it freezes and ships cannot move. Uh, then the biggest goal uh, we tried to achieve is, uh, were, was uh, to bring cultural communities to the shores of the Namunas, because mostly Namunas was forgotten and um, only fishermen used uh, the, the river as a you know, thing where to put the boat and where to fish. But now, uh, during, at the end of this day, I think we will go to the... Namuno 7, which is the big cultural ship 
of Kaunas district. And later on, I will explain everything about it and you will see by yourselves how we implemented uh, the cultural approach on the rivers. So thank you everybody for this opportunity uh, to be here today. I think what I would like to say at the end is let's celebrate rivers and let's celebrate rivers together. Thank you so much and have a nice day in Kaunas district. I'm happy to be here on behalf of Inter-Europe Joint Secretariat. Of course, this is a program that is funding the project still in implementation. Of course, of course this is final event and uh, we're always happy to see that physical final events are happening, which was not the case in previous two years. I know that every project has struggled, your project has struggled as well, and uh, we have been as a program quite flexible in al allowing, let's say, different changes in the projects so that you can actually have can have physical exchanges again, uh, like it happened before the COVID. So uh, we're happy to, to see the projects are actually very active. And, and, and there's a number of final conferences currently in, in place, and there's going to be still more until the end of the year. Because as you know, the current program is finalizing, and we already started a new program, and I'm going to talk about it as well. Um, yes. So um, and I'm very happy to be here in Lithuania, because I'm originally from Latvia, which is, you know, not that far, far from north, so it's always good to come back to Baltics uh, after a very hot French, French summer this year. So uh, a brief overview about the pro program, about the state of the play of the program currently. Uh, small focus on your project, particularly where you, you, your project fits in the program, and then I'm also going to give you an overview on a new program. Uh, well, the current program, because we are in a new, new planning period, and, and uh, about the new first call that we had just, just launched and are in the phase of evaluation now. Okay, yes. So, the state of the play of the program, and there are gonna be some numbers. Uh, you're gonna see how Inter-Europe has contributed already to regional development policies in Europe. And uh, yes, the current, current uh, program appeared 2014, 2020, I will just, uh, here. And uh, we had four calls. Uh, a lot, more than, more than uh, we saw that we we're going to do. And an additional COVID-focused fifth, fifth call, you could say, as well. Uh, and in total, more than 300 million euros were invested in the program, in the projects, and in uh, policy learning. And you see, yes, you're one of 258 projects currently being implemented, finalized uh, already in the current, in current uh, program. And uh, yes. These are, these are the key numbers of the current program. And achievements, yes, more than 5,000 good practices across all projects. And I know Star Cities has been also very active in defining and finding new good practices in, in your sphere of uh, activity. And uh, yes, more than 1,000 action plans. And uh, I know that some projects have struggled with action plans and also, I guess, for you it was not so easy process on defining the action plans, and as you might probably know, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more, in the new programming period, we are getting rid of action plans as such, and, and they are gonna be only exclusive for, for those who are not achieving policy change in the first place. So there are gonna be some changes. And uh, yes, uh, more than 70,000 people has increased capacity. And uh, this is a very important slide that we always uh, wanna stress as a program, uh, that uh, the investments done by inter Europe actually have huge leverage effect. So basically it's almost one, two, five. So one euro invested by the program has affected five euros uh, changed regarding the policy changes. So you know the inter Europe is about a policy change. It's about changing good practices, learning from each other, imp improving your regional development policies. And when you actually report those changes, we asked you to say, okay, what is the amount of funding you have actually you know, influenced? New calls launched, new projects started, uh, changes in the management of programs, et cetera, ERDF and other policies. So these are really real figures. These are tangible numbers. So you can see that the Inter Europe has, and your projects uh, in total have actually contributed to the massive policy change and massive improvements also in terms of uh, financial changes in, in Europe. And, uh, Okay. okay, and uh, briefly then switching over to Star Cities, and uh, I will not talk much about the project because you're going to present yourselves and I'm also 
uh, eager to hear about the newest developments uh, because again, it's one thing to learn the progress reports and also to, it's different when you can actually hear from, from real people what's happening on the ground and, and, and see the changes and also the previous speaker said I understand that three years ago it was a different place here and there's a lot of changes and hopefully also has been facilitated by the program and project as well. So yes, uh, current program, the one is, which is finishing now. Uh, we had these priorities and Star Cities is one of the projects in the priority environmental and resource efficiency, so 67 projects in total. So this was, you know, competition for the Star Cities, basically. And uh, yes, these are all the, there's a map of all the projects in the specific sub-priority of uh, cultural and heritage, uh, natural and cultural heritage, so 36 projects. These are the closest ones also working in the similar topics that Star Cities is covering. And, um, you can see it's quite a, good, quite a good coverage with, of course, some blank spots in Europe, but uh, it's basically partners from all Europe are working on these topics as well. So, and uh, very specifically speaking about natural heritage, these are your, you know, the most closest projects. So, I don't know if you have been in the process of seeing the results, but probably uh, also, some of those projects are also working with the river-based uh, tourism, for example. I you know uh, SWAR is one of the such projects, so you can still look at other projects as well, see their good practices. Maybe there's still some learning points that you can also take from these projects that have also been working in the similar domains as the Star Cities. And uh, just some brief strengths of the Star Cities, and then, and, um, of course, the topic is high on the EU agenda. Uh, that's why you were approved for funding, of course. Uh, but uh, yes, we have 56 people with increased capacity. As reported now, I believe there's going to be still some more policy changes. At least I hope to see more policy changes. This is what we as a secretariat always want to see. Um, and what I would particularly like to point out is that uh, you are one of the few projects that have actually three pilot actions running. And you know, in Interreg Europe, in the current program, pilot actions are not something standard. Uh, these are actually exceptional activities that you had to apply additionally. It was a, a different evaluation process and, and, and uh, you actually have three pilots approved, three pilots running, very specific. And uh, we are always very interested to learn about these pilots and how these pilots are generating potential policy changes. And also today I'm looking forward to hear more about the pilot implementation. And uh, as you know, in progress reports, we're very, very picky to listen about, okay, what did you do in the pilots? So, especially in your case, it's three pilots. So, uh, congratulations on that. Uh, usually it's one, project, one pilot per project, and then in many cases, we don't even approve pilots because, again, as I said, these are exceptional things. So, this is clearly one of the, you know, exceptional things of Star Cities. And yes, as I said, you're very active contributors to the Good Practice Database. We have a lot of good practices. 14 of them are, are approved by thematic experts of Pulse Learning Platform and in a database. So uh, you're a good you know, source of learning for other, other regions in Europe, as a municipality, as a region, how to develop uh, their rivers, river sites. And now uh, I'm going to finish with the facts and figures and some information about the new, new program or the current program. Basically, we are in a stage where we are still running the projects in the old program, which are finalizing, like Star Cities. And we're going to start new projects uh, well, beginning of next year uh, in the new program. And uh, if you have been following into Europe or events that we did, you probably know that we are not speaking about radical changes to the program. It is still the same core program as it was, but there are some evolutionary changes. I'm going to briefly go over them. And uh, I'm not so sure, but probably some of your organizations are also Apply, have also applied for the first call of the, of the new program. Or if you haven't, probably you're looking for the, let's say, second call. And uh, yes, this is important. We always have to say that uh, everything that I'm showing is not 100% approved because we still need official, official uh, validation by the future European, uh, by future monitoring committee, but okay. This is a disclaimer, but basically these, these are real, real, real figures now. Uh, so yes, uh, the good news for Inter Europe is that the program budget is actually larger for this period than it was previously, even with the Brexit, even with exit of, U uh, of UK from the, from the program and from the European Union. 
And the budget is bigger, so more chance for new projects, definitely. Uh, yes, 29 countries involved. The United Kingdom is now more involved as, a, let's say, eligible country for funding. You can still involve British partners if they're coming with their own 100% funding, but these are, you know, what happened. And now we have one cross-cutting priority across all projects and cross activities or is a capacity building. Capacity building of professionals working in regional development policies and also capacity building of organizations. So the policy maker organizations and, and, and other, other eligible organizations. So, and uh, yes, the core goal still remains the same. The aim of the Interreg Europe is to improve regional development policies through experience exchange, through defining new good practices, through learning, through exchanging uh, learnings. We want to see that the projects you're implementing are actually contributing to the change of the, the policies that you have been running and that they, these changes can actually be reflected in the funding influence as well. So uh, there is no big change in that. And uh, yes, the program is primarily dedicated to the policymakers at the national, regional, local level. Yes, we still uh, approve that cluster organizations are coming as a partners, universities, etc. but they are not the core target audience of the project. So the core target audience is public, public policymakers. And yes, of course, the focus on exchange of experience still remains. So as I, as I said, the core of the program is the same. There are a lot of small changes, some, some evolutionary changes, but the core is the same. Uh, and the program scope is no six topics. Smart green and social are the big ones, smart green especially. So the idea is that 80% of the funding will go to these priorities. And we see it very well reflected in the, in the first call as well. Um, and we also have, for first time, this cross-cutting horizontal priority governance. So, for example, there can be project on innovative public procurement, which is not probably topic-specific. And, and, and uh, we don't expect to have a lot of those projects, but there's an opportunity also to work on that. So, uh, it's still the same kind of project that we had now, uh, with similar budgets, with similar activities. But also, we can have now these horizontal, horizontal projects as well. And... Again, two core actions to the program, projects and a post learning platform. Uh, I will not tell about what is the project because you're all part of the project here. Uh, you know how it happens, so it's limited for, um, for several years and you're exchanging good practices, you're traveling, hopefully, uh, to each other's regions and, and, and uh, learning from each other and defining the policy changes and actually contributing to policy implementation. And the new big change, as I said, is that currently in the current program, we asked you to really work on action plans, to develop the action plans as a core deliverable on the first phase of the project, and then monitor the implementation in the second phase. In the new program, we have this core phase and a follow-up phase, but there is no more need for an action plan. So we have, we have made also some lessons on our side, and we see that uh, the action plans are only going to be small complementary details for those partners who are not able to achieve policy change in the core phase. So in a new, new program, we actually want to see policy changes already happening in the first three years uh, of the project implementation. So no more focus on action plans as the core and then monitoring. So this is probably a big change. And also, as I mentioned pilots, also a new change in the new program is that uh, you can apply for the pilots two stages in the, in the project implementation lifetime. So either at the application stage, or during the midterm review as was currently. So for the new projects as well, and we see there's quite many projects in the first call who actually are already applying to do a pilot, let's say in the second year of the project, uh, not waiting until the end. So it can also be done, these are new, two new changes. And of course, post learning platform, uh, ever developing a service of the program. We are working closely with our thematic experts in different fields who are analyzing your good practices, who are doing a lot of uh, events, online events, topical events, policy briefs. Uh, you can contact them. Uh, they can arrange matchmaking experience, et cetera. And what I would like to stress about the policy learning platform um, is that some of the services the platform offer are not linked to the projects. And here I'm appealing to everybody working in the public policy. Uh, that, for example, peer review, which is, I would say, the core core service of the platform and the most valuable and most, let's say, intense one where actually you as a policymaker can, up, can come up with a challenge and the policy learning uh, platform 
are going to select peers from different European regions and can actually come to your region for two days intensive well, consulting session, basically, uh, to, 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 to help you with your, your, your policy instrument. And these are funded by the program. You don't need to compete for this funding. Uh, you just apply. It's a very, very simple process. We want to have more regions coming up with requests for the peer reviews. So I would just like to stress it out that you don't need to be linked to the current or the future project. It can happen without, without linking to the project. So really encourage you to use these services. Uh, we have been traveling recently to, to, to Poland for the peer review, Norway does upcoming peer reviews. They are very valuable services. This is basically an inter Europe learning activity compressed in two days. Uh, there's a lot of learning can be done. And uh, yes, and these are the core figures of the first call. So quite a big activity. So we have received 135 project applications, and we are currently very busy in assessing them, in evaluating them. Uh, hopefully, results are going to be available to all of the all of the people who participated by the end of the year, and then hopefully we can start implementation of the new projects in the beginning of next year. And uh, as you can see. Um, green priority is super popular now. It's logical, of course, with what's currently happening in, in, in the world in Europe and regarding the energy prices, etc. But uh, this is not just an energy. So green and smart and social, you can see, are really the big topics. And yes, we're going to launch a second call in next year. Uh, there might be a third call and fourth call as well. We don't know that. It depends always on the amount of applications uh, funded, but there's definitely going to be a second call. So if you were not able to submit an application for the first call, if you were looking for the partnership, so better start doing it already now. Uh, there are going to be maybe some slight changes in the call, but basically it's going to be very similar to the current current call that we, 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 we just you know, closed in May. And yes, always you can look for us, uh, Joint Secretariat for Assistance. Uh, there are different types of services. Ask for feedback is, is open when the call is open. Uh, but before that, you can also use all kind of resources available in our new web pages. You know, Inter Europe just launched a new web page. There have been some technical issues also with good practices, etc. But uh, it's still a work in process. It's, it's not so easy to create a new database. So yes. Look, look in these resources. And with that, I'm going to finish. And if you have any questions, and also I'm going to spend the day with you, so you can also approach me later on as well. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot to Kaunas team for welcoming us uh, again in Kaunas. It's, uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, three years ago, and uh, it's uh, still a, a pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you, Chris Tabs, to, to be here also uh, to represent uh, the GS and to, uh, to meet us uh, in real for the first time, I think. <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to, to be uh, at this uh, final conference because uh, I think we, we, we have done a great work uh, through Star Cities and uh, before each partner will uh, present the results of uh, action plan, I will uh, uh, say a few words about uh, the learning activities and the results of the first phase of uh, the project. Okay, so just a reminder. Uh, so Star City's aim is to work on uh, river tourism development, uh, also through uh, the improvement of uh, regional policies uh, related to natural and cultural heritage. So we are a project um, of the third call of the previous uh, program uh, Interreg Europe. And uh, as you, you will see in the next slide, we, we are uh, seven partners uh, representing five different regions plus a uh, next tour network. Uh, so this project started in, um, in 2018 and uh, will uh, finish next year in 2023. Uh, uh, so we had a first phase um, focused on learning, exchange of experiences, of uh, good practices, etc. And now we are all implementing our regional action plans. Okay, so here is uh, the map of uh, the partners. So as you can see, we are covering a big part of uh, Europe. So it's uh, 
uh, also one of the interesting uh, uh, aspects of the project to, to gather uh, partners from uh, really different parts of Europe, from the north, from the east, uh, from the center, etc. And uh, also the Nextdoor uh, network is part of uh, our project as an advisory partner, uh, which uh, is also an opportunity to uh, open the this uh, partnership to uh, uh, new uh, regions, um, uh, for example, in our good practice um, uh, list, we have uh, good practices from uh, from Veneto region or uh, from uh, other other countries. So next to uh, participation is also an opportunity to really sp spread the message and the the, the learning of Interweg Europe to uh, a bigger part of uh, of Europe. So uh, the first thing we have done uh, during the first year of uh, Star Cities was to uh, prepare regional assessments uh, to, um, to have like a state of play of uh, river tourism development in our five uh, uh, cities or five regions. And um, at the end of this uh, state of play, we decided uh, of a thematic program based on those uh, four different topics. So the first topic was uh, local and communities. The second one, products and marketing. Third one, uh, governance and, uh, and uh, cooperation. And uh, the last one was environment and uh, sustainability. And we identified for each uh, topic um, one uh, particular partner uh, which will present good practices because uh, each partner, uh, each region uh, has uh, like uh, uh, strengths and also weaknesses. So we try to like connect uh, both. So what we have done, we did study visits uh, uh, different, uh, in uh, different regions. Uh, we did a lot of uh, webinars online when the, the COVID crisis uh, um, started. Uh, also, we did a lot of uh, thematic workshop to exchange uh, our different um, um, uh, ideals and uh, to do like uh, brainstorming sessions on different topics. Um, and uh, through those different learning activities, we started to uh, identify good practices uh, from all the partners and to select them. So we, we had a a very um, uh, regular uh, process of selection of good practices. So, for example, after each study visit, we uh, voted for which good practices we think uh, could be of inspiration, not only for this region, but for other regions. And that's how we uh, finally uh, selected a lot of uh, good practices. So now I will propose you to uh, see some pictures of uh, the first study visit of the project in, uh, three years ago here in Kaunas. Um, unfortunately, after this uh, uh, study visit, we had like, uh, I think, two years or something like that of gap <laughs> uh, until the next one. Uh, so also you will see on the pictures that uh, this place, this church has changed a lot. <laughs> So if we don't have uh, the, the music, maybe I can comment a little bit. <laughs> so as you can see, we have done a lot of uh, boat trips during the different study visits. <laughs> and uh, also we, we, we came here in the church by boat. So here you can see that this place was quite different. And I think we don't see the outside, but it was uh, all real, with a lot of uh, machines, etc., doing uh, the facilities. So. so here is one of the good practices that were presented, the stuba. 
so uh, um, a place for communities with a lot of activities. And we also had uh, uh, stories of the weaver uh, doing the, the, the boat trip. Then we went to uh, Klotuva Resort uh, to also speak about architecture and history. And, uh, and here we are in the Kaunas 22, 2022 office. <laughs> and we did a, a tour uh, through Kaunas City to um, also discover some good practices related to locals and communities and, uh, and uh, also architecture. So here is an example of uh, the community program also. So you can find uh, all the, these good practices uh, published on the Star Cities website and uh, some of them have been selected to, to be on the policy learning uh, platform of Interreg Europe. So um, uh, I really uh, invite you to, to see also, all, all, also the, the, the next uh, study visits videos we have on the YouTube uh, channel. Okay, so I will try to be fast in the next slides, uh, but I would like to give an idea of uh, the different good practices uh, we identified in each topic. Uh, so, the f as I said, the first topic was locals and communities, and uh, Kaunas was a great uh, contributor <laughs> on, this, uh, on this topic. Uh, so, for example, we learned a lot about the Fluxus Labs uh, project, which is a, a community program involving a lot of uh, local people, uh, also artists, etc., so a lot of, uh, of activities. Uh, uh, during the last past year, and I think also uh, uh, this year. I think the, the Fluxus Labs festival is happening to, uh, in, two days. in two days, yes, exactly. So it was one of the examples. Uh, then we talked about products and marketing, and for example, we proposed uh, um, as a good practice uh, a booking platform uh, that we developed it in, uh, in, um, in Paris region, so not only Paris center, but really the, the metropolis of Paris. And it is, it is a, a collaborative uh, platform um, created by uh, different organizations. So Paris Tourism Office uh, with uh, the tourism boards uh, of all the, uh, the outside, let's say, but the closer outside of Paris. And uh, this platform is really uh, um, uh, a huge tool for us to promote activities in uh, uh, less known uh, places or less known topics uh, when you are thinking about Paris, of course you think about the Eiffel Tower, but there is so much things uh, to, to discover and uh, this uh, uh, booking platform is a really a good tool for this. And of course, uh, with, uh, with uh, tourism activities are a big part of it during the summer and, uh, and spring also. Then we talked a lot about governance and cooperation. I think uh, it was uh, like a, uh, also a course topic uh, that we, uh, we, on, we always are speak, uh, speaking about that. Um, and one of the good practices uh, we uh, discovered in this topic was uh, from Hamburg, from Germany. It is a Curse Helbe project, which is a partnership between uh, different uh, DMOs uh, along uh, the River Helm uh, that uh, are uh, developing a lot of uh, activities together, also marketing activities. And uh, this, uh, this partnership was of inspiration, for example, for us also in Vadima. And last uh, topic was environment and uh, sustainability. And uh, Ljubljana was uh, the main uh, actor in this topic. 
so for example, uh, one of the good practice, practices uh, identified was uh, the Green Scheme of Slovenian Tourism, which is a, a national tool to, uh, uh, to help um, all types of uh, uh, tourism stakeholders to improve uh, their activities uh, in terms of uh, sustainability. Uh, so it's a, a national tool, but uh, 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 that can be adapted in, at a different level and was of inspiration for, for us. So uh, all in all, uh, you can here see the main figures uh, and results of the first phase. So we have identified uh, 34 uh, good practices and uh, already uh, 14 are published on the Interreg Europe policy learning platform. Uh, I think, uh, Christophe, you already uh, spoke about um, the people with increased capacity. Um, also, we, 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 I said we spend a lot of time on the thematic workshops and uh, we try to, um, to uh, summarize uh, the learning of those workshops through uh, uh, 24 challenges for river tourism development. Uh, those challenges could be also like recommendations for the future. And uh, so the good practices and challenges are all presented in uh, a good, the good practice guide of uh, Star Cities, which have been published in English and also in all the national languages of uh, partners to be a tool for stakeholders. And um, I have to say that, for example, uh, I was contacted by a, a region from the south of France because they said that uh, our good practices uh, guide was uh, really a tool for them. So I was very happy to, to have that. And, um, and also, um, of course, we used those good practices and uh, ideas uh, to uh, build our regional action plans. So, our five action plans were approved uh, at uh, uh, the end of uh, 2021 and we are now implementing them. And as you already know, uh, three actions among all the actions of the action plans have been um, approved as pilot actions and are uh, uh, financed by Interreg Europe, which is uh, really um, uh, a big uh, uh, help for, them, for us because uh, those actions uh, would wouldn't have been possible without this uh, funding. So, thank you, Interreg Europe, again. Oop. Sorry. And that's all for me. So, I have to say thank you uh, and congratulations for uh, everybody for this first phase. And now we will uh, think uh, and uh, speak about uh, the implementation of action plans. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ramena Pekita, and I represent today, as Vilta told already, uh, the Let's Celebrate the Rivers initiative in CONUS, and also CONUS 2022 uh, uh, recently implemented the action, uh, pilot action. Uh, and um, I will, uh, oh, working. Uh, briefly uh, introduce uh, about the Silicon 2022 is a partner of um, the Star Cities project and the Interreg Europe program funding and the CONUS uh, uh, team uh, started this project uh, addressing the new policy instrument CONUS uh, um, strategic document culture strategy for 2017-27 period. And uh, this is uh, the main strategic document for the um, now running project of uh, CONUS Europe and Capital of Culture for 2022. Uh, so CONUS team developed uh, the action plan based on this instrument and with the idea that uh, to uh, develop something, a new project. Uh, uh, in our case, it's the organization of the River Festival in CONUS. And uh, this action was approved later uh, as a pilot action, uh, learning from good practices from partner countries of this project, uh, or river practices. And the policy change in this case is considered by implementing this new project. Uh, 
so well uh, inspired by the uh, French practice uh, Le Tête du Canal uh, Festival, Summer in the Canals Festival, which is organized uh, each summer. Uh, and we had uh, four days uh, study visit in Paris, visiting uh, uh, these uh, best examples, uh, the Summer in the Canals Festival, and also the, uh, in, which is organized in Saint Saint Denis department, and also visited Walter Marner department. Uh, they are organizing. Uh, uh, Marne River tour and also learned uh, more um, good practices as uh, Odyssey, the Odyssey project in Paris. So we're uh, learning about uh, budgeting, meeting with the stakeholders, organizers, also uh, went by bicycles along the canals and rivers, uh, observing these places where the festival is taking place. And so a uh, very rich program and very valuable. Thank you very much for this. So our River Festival in Konas took place uh, uh, this uh, year in May, May 21st, uh, and uh, it was organized during the grand opening uh, year of European Capital of Culture, Konas, and uh, was supported and funded by Kona City Municipality in line with this new strategic document, Culture Strategy. And also funded by uh, Interreg Europe program. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we have two uh, biggest Lithuanian rivers in Kona and the confluence of them, uh, the Namanas and Neris rivers. So uh, we invited the local communities and local people, cultural organizations to develop together the cultural roots uh, for this river festival uh, on both uh, uh, rivers and Namunas and Neris. So we had two roots. Uh, and uh, Namunas uh, has uh, quite a good infrastructure uh, on the riverbank. So we also organized a bicycle tour. Our today guide was also uh, the guide of this bicycle <laughs> route that day. Uh, we had uh, also uh, for the culture route for Neris River and uh, the main uh, vehicle was water, of course, kayaks, canoes, rafts, and uh, so paddling. But also on the river, uh, on the Riz River, we had the orienteering game. It was quite exciting, quite new for us. We didn't have uh, till then in uh, such orienteering game when you are paddling. <laughs> so uh, we had two uh, starts, two finishes, uh, and eight uh, culture stops, uh, uh, music going along the river, floating concerts, and uh, on the stops, people could. Uh, have uh, sports, culture activities, workshops, uh, stage performances. So a lot uh, was. <coughs> ah, and these are the numbers. So eight cultural stops with all these activities. More than 50 um, uh, institutions, organizations, professional artists and amateur artists and young artists and local communities, local businesses and uh, creative, such creators, citizens, local citizens were involved to develop this uh, program. So I will try to, oh. Viva will help, <laughs> a short video of this event. Uh, it's not working with music, so I will tell a little bit that uh, in the starts uh, of these two roads, local communities were uh, also giving us uh, something, uh, uh, sharing their uh, local community spirit, sharing with uh, what they have uh, when they uh, took the starts. And uh, in the stops, uh, people could also draw, paint, and uh, plein airs, uh, take part in the plein airs, and, a lot, a lot, and we had also not local people, also uh, the city hosts also taking part of this uh, event. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video and 
uh, we invite you to think about coming to Kaunas to the Sriva Festival next year. So some pictures. About uh, 1,000 participants took part uh, uh, going along the rivers, on river banks, uh, also uh, people on foot, on by bicycles could come to the stops and just take part of the, these small events happening on river banks. And uh, the most uh, important uh, for the River Festival is community engagement. Uh, this is like an invitation to develop the program together with local communities and local people uh, to find them new relations by themselves with the river. Tamanas and Iris, where they live or maybe work or create on these banks. Uh, so uh, we invited a lot of really a lot of people and organizations, and uh, um, the main purpose was to experience uh, the rivers uh, of the city, to invite people to experience the city of the river through uh, cultural roots in the water and in the river banks and build new connections and sharing views, uh, sharing what the community spirit, uh, sharing professional uh, stage performances, everything. A lot, a lot of activities. And this is uh, the banner of the event. I think it shows uh, very good uh, that you can choose whatever you want to do at the river. And uh, uh, we started to engage community quite early, organizing uh, workshops of, uh, preparation as preparation for the festival. So during these workshops, uh, about 200 participants took part in the drawing kind of our kites. Uh, we then later, during the festival, uh, we put them on the river banks. It's like the symbol of this festival. And also uh, invited to make uh, the, so the rafts uh, that could be later used uh, during the summertime, traveling, or like concert platforms, new platforms. Uh, we had a very nice also follow-up. It's like was organized like after that. It's also uh, part of the community engagement. Uh, we had a floating concert. These musicians uh, build the, the raft for themselves and just put their all equipment. And we had the good music. We went by kayaks and. Uh, so the sunset going down, so very good experience for the community. Those people uh, who were involved directly preparing the program and act, took active part. And that's it about uh, uh, this river festival. And in short, we have, uh, as an initiative of Let's Celebrate the Rivers, we invite people uh, during the summertime, also uh, organized a festival uh, which the patient and Amonites will be drawing the Amonites. Uh, we organized a one day premiere in different parts of uh, riverbanks of Amonites. It's also outside Kona City, so uh, building new connections, strengthening connections through creative uh, activities. Uh, of local communities. Uh, so, and that's it. And uh, our plan is uh, also a planning for the next year uh, to, to extend this river festival, yeah, to, to, that it was organized each year in May. It is the celebration of Kona City birthday. So we invite people to celebrate Kona's birthday from the rivers, from the uh, party at the, on the riverbanks, uh, where, as we see, Kona City was established uh, and developed because of the rivers. So it's a good, good opportunity to celebrate birthday with the rivers. So also looking for opportunities, making some uh, floating new culture platforms as Namalas and Neres, only a small part is navigable in the city by boats, by ships. So we are looking for a new type of 
and creating the samples of lead funds that could be used for concerts. <laughs> So now I will speak of, uh, uh, about our, one of our two actions of our action plan and you will see that uh, it's quite uh, similar uh, with uh, the Let's Celebrate the River event in Kaunas we just discovered. So um, uh, one of our actions was the organization of the Marm River Tour. Um, thanks to the financement of uh, Interweg Europe as a pilot action. And uh, I will also talk a little bit about the communication strategy. Okay, so uh, to put the, the context uh, first, uh, this event, uh, as all the projects we are organizing, is organized as a partnership under the uh, partnership in French, it's uh, Cap sur la Marne. Uh, so we are uh, four different uh, destination management organizations working along the Marne River. Uh, the project uh, um, perimeter area is uh, uh, 50 kilometers long, 50 kilometers of uh, rivers um, along the Marne, uh, 30 towns, uh, etc. So it's uh, very important um, uh, because uh, all the projects I will present uh, would not have been possible just organized by one organization. So uh, it's possible we go because we are joining forces to do that. And for those who don't uh, know at all uh, Val de Marne and Mount River, we are really close to Paris, as you can see on the map. Um, the Mount River is uh, joining the Seine River at the confluence just at the doors of Paris, so it's very close. And still, as you will see, uh, we have very uh, beautiful landscapes, natural and uh, also uh, with a lot of uh, natural and uh, cultural heritage. So um, the Marne River Tour is the last of our project, but we did uh, other projects before. Uh, um, in particular, uh, thanks to uh, a, a funding from our region or, uh, of uh, our region, uh, Ile de France region. So, for example, we did a lot of, uh, of activities, tourism activities, also in uh, 2021. Um, and uh, that's also because of those first activities that we decided to create like a, a new brand about the Marne River. Um, to promote uh, the action we are implementing together uh, with those uh, four different uh, DMOs. So, what is the Mount River Tour? So, first, uh, the name Mount River Tour is the application name we put it in the uh, Interact Europe application, uh, but the name in French is La Grande Aventure which means something like the great adventure along the Mount River. Uh, we wanted to uh, emphasize on the, uh, the sport aspect and uh, the active aspect of the event. So this event is inspired by the Tiber Tour, uh, which is uh, also an annual event organized through La Gio region along uh, the Tiber River, crossing Rome, of course. And uh, we also took inspiration uh, from the, the, the event uh, Romena just presented in Kaunas. Uh, so we started the organization uh, last autumn and it was also sportive to organize everything in six months. <laughs> but we did it and the first edition took place uh, in June 2022. So we had um, um, uh, 66,000 euros of total budget for this event, which is for us a big budget. Uh, and uh, it allows us to do things that we, we can't do usually with uh, our own budget. So what is a Mount River tour? You will see it on the video. It was um, um, different river routes organized uh, during two days. So on the, Sunday, on the Saturday and the Sunday, participants can choose uh, to participate through hiking, cycling or canoeing. And uh, all the three uh, different river routes gather at the end of the day at uh, uh, an ending point 
uh, where uh, people can uh, relax, have uh, drinks uh, or snacks, etc., and uh, also festive activities. Um, uh, also, it's not just about sport, it's also about uh, culture. So each river route is uh, punctuated by cultural stops uh, with um, uh, guides uh, uh, talking about the history of the river, the cultural heritage, natural heritage, or presenting uh, particular projects or different aspects of the territory. And it's very important. And also, we created this event during two days. So we invited people to um, do like a journey through the mound uh, during the weekend uh, with the possibility to, uh, to camp uh, on the Saturday night uh, at the, the arrival of uh, the, the river woods on the Saturday. Uh, so for those that, uh, the, for the uh, small people that uh, camp, it was really an adventure. <laughs> and so you will have some impressions in the video. So you will see some of our landscapes. So here is uh, the starting of the day. So you can see that we are giving participants a word book and also uh, uh, and then they are gathered into groups. So depending of uh, the sport, uh, so hiking, cycling, or paddling, uh, the 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 uh, number of participants in groups were different. For example, for hiking uh, participants, there were about 40 people together uh, in group. For cycling, it was like 20 people and 15 for the paddling uh, people. So here you can see some of the cultural stops. For example, we had stops in a museum, a contemporary art uh, center. And uh, I can send you the, the video if you want to can put the uh, translated uh, subtitles to have uh, uh, also the, the presentations and, uh, and some impressions from the participants. So also during the, for the paddling route, they crossed this uh, place which is uh, part of the Olympic Games um, uh, 2024 uh, site. So it was very exciting for the participants to, uh, <laughs> to see this place. You can see that it, it, some, some parts were very nat natural. And at the end of uh, each day, uh, we also had uh, artistic performances uh, just before the high level. And it was very uh, um, pleasant to see uh, participants uh, joining by walking, by cycling, by paddling, uh, high weaving at the same place with uh, also the artists and the possibility to, to relax, to as you can see, to have a drink, etc. So the idea is to try to uh, uh, do another edition, uh, not, uh, not next year, but uh, uh, the, the, in 2024. Uh, the concept of uh, the event is to be uh, biannual. Uh, and. Uh, so the next edition should be uh, close to the Olympic Games in Paris. So of course, as you can imagine, we will try to do something with that. <laughs> uh, so um, now I think you have a, big, uh, a good picture of uh, the format, etc. Here are some uh, results. So we welcomed um, uh, 700 participants during the two days 
As you can see, uh, most of us uh, were hiking participants, uh, but we also had great success with the canoe, which was full for the registration, so we had a lot of a big demand of, on canoe. Um, the different uh, river routes cost uh, 20, 20, 22 towns, which is also a lot, and um, we had 28 super adventurers that did the two days and the camping, and also part of the team. <laughs> Uh, and um, yeah, who uh, are all those uh, people? They are from uh, from the region, from the uh, de france uh, region. Uh, it, uh, it is like um, uh, 1980 percent from the region. Um, but uh, what is uh, good for us is that it's a younger public that we have uh, uh, we had in the previous. Uh, events uh, that we already organized, so, so it's uh, like a, a new target for us, which is a, a good thing. Uh, and um, and they came uh, with their family, but mainly with friends and also alone. We had a, a lot of people alone, but uh, of course they they met they met a lot of uh, people during the the trip. Also, some results in terms of um, organization. So, uh, we were nine people uh, organi organizing this, um, this uh, event. Uh, and uh, as I said, in six months, it was quite, quite uh, challenging. Um, we also uh, needed a lot of help uh, from uh, sporting partners. So we worked a lot with the clubs and federations of hiking, cycling and paddling that took care of, um, of the participants during the day. So each group was uh, supervised by volunteers from the cl uh, sporting clubs, etc. And uh, at the end, we had uh, uh, 90, uh, 90 volunteers involved, which is uh, a lot, as you can imagine. Also, we had uh, more than uh, 30 uh, guides and uh, um, uh, people uh, doing uh, cultural stops and also artists. And we were very lucky with the weather. I think it was not the case for Kaunas. So <laughs> as, you, as you have seen on the, on the video, uh, Sun was also a participant. And that's all for me, so thank you. I'm here with my colleague Elisabetta Romano from the City of Rome to, pre to introduce our action plan uh, results. And uh, I know that the time is a bit, uh, we are a bit late, but I'll try to catch up. Uh, so, uh, what about our, our project? So just to uh, sum up. Uh, we are Lazio region and the city of Rome, so the, the Lazio region is the region of, the, of, of Rome and uh, uh, our project target was the Tiber River uh, in Rome and in Lazio. We are talking about a 405 kilometers river stretching on three different regions, uh, central regions in Italy and uh, with uh, um, something like 56 uh, municipalities crossed by this river and 60 kilometers of urbanized fluvial stretches. And uh, so basically we are talking about one of the most important river in Italy. And um, what is uh, been, uh, um, let's say, um, caught during the implementation of Star Cities project, it was a phenomenon of the new initiatives organized by local uh, residents concerning the river uh, amenities and uh, uh, let's say uh, usage. Uh, during the last four or five years, we have seen the increasing number of activities organized, for instance, like Tevere Day. Uh, we have seen the just last few months ago, Fiumicino Paddling Festival, uh, the Scisa Internazionale del Tevere, which is the Tiber Tour, which inspired the good practice of uh, Val de Marna, uh, and other initiatives. This was, this was very important for us because as institutions, we were starting to organize our initiatives in order to to search a, a sort, of, uh, sort of model of coordinating this kind of events. Uh, let's say that uh, we have done this partly already, 
like uh, using a model of uh, um, river contracts, which is our uh, management management model uh, drawn from the uh, Contrat de Rivière in France to manage to manage the rivers with locals, with residents, with people, but not to manage the tourism. So we were missing, let's say, somehow, uh, a model for managing tourist, uh, river tourism in the Lazio region and in Rome. Uh, as you can see, there are other stories we have collected during the Star Cities implementation project. These are some uh, uh, spots we have seen during the, uh, our study tours in, uh, in Lazio and in Rome. Uh, but, um, as I was saying before, uh, we, are, we were missing, let's say, a governance and management of river tourism, actually. So the Star Cities project was very, very important for us because it provided us with some new models we could uh, use in order to improve our capacity to intervene in these events, so to coordinate somehow. And uh, I'm not saying that we were not, we are cut out of initiatives in tourist sector. Of course, both the Lazio region and the city of Rome uh, have been organizing, uh, let's say, let's say um, tourism uh, management, but using more, uh, let's say, promotional models, marketing models, more than management and governance models. So um, what we were missing, we were new modern model of governing the rivers, the, the river tourism. Um, so we draw attention, we took attention to some of uh, our partners' uh, good practices, especially focusing on the DMO, destination management organizations, which were, which are a model, represent a model which was lacking in Lazio region. So Lazio region decided through the uh, tourist agency, regional tourist agency, to launch uh, um, a call to finance new DMOs in the Lazio region. And this happened in 2021 uh, with uh, 4.5 million euros to uh, start up new DMOs in the Lazio region. Uh, we finally founded, founded 25 new DMOs in all the regional territory. Uh, three, uh, including, and this is very important, coming from the Star Cities project, including areas which are the valley areas of rivers, mainly the Tiber Valley and the middle valley of any river. This means that we wanted to um, coordinate the creation of new DMOs, but also to indicate target areas where to implement these DMOs. So uh, among the other areas, of course, this long call for proposal regarded concern all the areas of uh, quite a big region in Italy, uh, two of the areas were on the rivers. Uh, what happened is that uh, following this launch of uh, this launch for for call of proposals, we finally founded, as I said, 25 new uh, proposals, 25 new projects of DMOs, and uh, three of, of them were uh, targeted on river tourism, uh, Tevere Day, DMO Tevere Mare a Trattori, which was promoted by the municipality Nine Euro of Rome, which is part of, of course, of Star City project and Comunità Montana della Niene. The total amount of money allocated to these, these three new DMOs for, targeted on river tourism was half a million euros. And they are running for one year time in order then to you know, go on with other self-funding uh, and other public funding. Um, so the municipality and our inspiration for a DMO, from a DMO on Tiber River was basically from the uh, management river tourism of Valdemar, uh, which Camille has perfectly represented before, so I don't have to, to do it again to save time. But of course, they have all been organizing this uh, management of river tourism through the creation of interconnected DMOs, uh, which are acting with, a, a, let's say, um, um, a vision, in a way, and uh, so what we are uh, trying to do uh, through the, these DMOs we have funded uh, like La as La Lazio region and the municipality nine is to start from the bottom. So we are now, we have now three new DMOs targeted on rivers. And uh, basically what we want to do is to create a regional DMO, um, which will be like the, say the, 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 the cabin of uh, uh, let's say, uh, organizing the territorial tourism, especially in the, in the, in the rivers. So, 
Uh, now I leave the floor to uh, Elisabetta to present the, the, the one of these DMOs that they have. They are participating as municipality, which has won the launch of call for call for proposals of the Lazio region, and which is actually starting their activities. Elisabetta. And um, I'm from Municipality 9 of Rome. Rome is divided in 15 uh, administrative bodies, and uh, Municipality 9 is uh, one of these uh, bodies. Uh, the Tiber cross the territory of our uh, municipality for uh, uh, 14 kilometers, then cross the um, municipality 10, and then arrived to the sea. This point of arrive, arrive is very important because uh, there is an ancient city, Ostia, an ancient Roman city, and uh, now you can visit uh, an interesting archaeological area and uh, the ancient port of Trano. Um, now, uh, with um, all people now come in Rome to visit uh, its monument, its uh, ancient and fascinating heritage, cultural and historical, but not to visit the river. Our goal now is uh, to involve the river in the way of tourism in Rome. And uh, Star Cities project and the new G DMO, the establishment this year uh, of the, our DMO, our pilot, our um, yeah. action plan in the Star Cities project is very important because uh, uh, we um, we have involved um, about uh, um, six. 50, 50. Uh, 50 uh, public body um, and um, um, private associations. Um, the goal is uh, uh, to make a link between internal area and the uh, ancient city uh, of Rome and the new city of Rome um, uh, with, the, with the river until the coastal areas. So uh, the partner of uh, our TMO are uh, coastal cities, uh, internal cities, and private uh, association into the uh, basin of, uh, of Tiber. And uh, you can see in, um, in this uh, slide three of the uh, elements uh, on which is uh, uh, our work of DMO. Main goal, uh, specific objective and tools. Main goal, uh, I saw uh, create a link between the cost, this is very important. Um, second one, <coughs> tourism development on the target area, new target area, creation of distinctive and original tourism destination, a different way to come in Rome uh, to, uh, to involve the, the, the Tiber and, the river, and uh, to uh, promoting uh, innovation, sustainability, and uh, also uh, accessibility to the, to the bank. Because in the Municipality 9, the bank is uh, not built but uh, natural, so uh, we, can, um, we can make uh, a new, um, new way to, to, to come in, in our city. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to tell you about what we are doing in Hamburg Metropolitan Region and I'm going to start out with some... Uh, there? Hello? Ah. There. with some facts about uh, the region um, that we are talking about because I think um, uh, it's, it differs from your regions because it's much, much bigger. Um, Hamburg Metropolitan Region and we have the River Elbe in, in the midst of our region as you can see and um, our region is um, 
composed of four federal states. In the middle, there's the city of Hamburg. We have five million inhabitants. Um, and Hamburg has almost two million alone. And, and we have 272 kilometers of river Elbe in this region. So you can imagine it's not really easy um, to, to govern it or to market it. And so it's a very uh, huge region. And um, yeah. No, I have to point there just some impressions so that you know what we are talking about. Many of you have been to Hamburg this year, so this was great that this could happen finally after two years of delay that you could all come to Hamburg. And um, so we are the busy international port. The city of Hamburg, of course, has the third biggest port in Europe. And um, Hamburg itself is a tourism hotspot. You see that the Elbe um, water um, and so it's uh, very busy there also. Um, we have industrial heritage and maritime culture. You saw this too when we were visiting our port museum. And we also um, had the former German-German border east of, to the east of Hamburg, where the Elbe used to be actually the, the Iron Curtain, which makes uh, that region really special. And um, um, but also you can see that um, we have a lot of uh, space, basically, and the Elbe is um, outside of Hamburg, but also in Hamburg. Very green and offers a lot of place for activities by and on the water, for cycling, um, on unspoiled landscapes and nature and tranquility. So it's a large area where you can find basically everything and we have a very diversified touristic product. So um, when uh, the, the colleagues from Rome and uh, Lazio are talking about we don't have DMOs, we don't have boats, and we have all this, but still uh, we feel that um, we can do better, of course, and also because we have to, because we have a high pressure on our touristic um, regions, as you can see. Can I go back? When I show you the region, hang on, huh? there. You can see that we have the coast, the Baltic Sea, and the North Sea, but mainly the Baltic Sea coast. The colleagues there say, please, no more marketing. We are so overcrowded, we can't, can't take any more people, maybe in January or February. But the end, for the rest of the year, we are really, leave us alone, so to speak. So, but we have um, areas, and the Elbe is part of this, um, where we can still take more people, basically. But I wanted to go back one. Oh, no, here. But you can see that our destination management is, of course, very fragmented. As I said, four federal states, and um, each district along the Elbe has their own uh, de destination management organization. One exception is Jens, who's sitting there from the Kurs Elbe project, which is one of our good practices. Um, he has managed to at least uh, bring five of them together to, to work together, and they have worked together on, on um, infrastructure development, but now they are still working, and now they're still working to get together on uh, marketing issues, and, um, but still, this is, yeah, ask Jens later on, it's uh, hard work um, to keep them all together and to, to bring them to work together, and we, of course, in the middle, we are from, from the metropolitan region, we don't really have you know the authority to tell any of these DMO what to do? So, um, so this is this is our situation basically. The Elbe, which is a, a great asset that we have, but which is we feel touristically underdeveloped. Well, at least in many regions, it could take more tourism. But we also have natural nature preservation areas there, so it's a conflict. On the other hand, we have the natural federal waterway, which is also a conflict with tourism, so it's not easy. But um, and we have, of course, a big pressure of two million Hamburg people who want to spend the weekends somewhere in the region and who go out. Um, so um, the river tourism management, as I said, is very fragmented. And um, if there is any river tourism management, I have to say, the city of Hamburg, um, Hamburg tourism, which um, is always almost. It's almost always lacking in our meetings, which, which tells you that they don't really have much interest in uh, projects like these because they think everything is running smoothly in Hamburg. You know, numbers are always going up again now after COVID. The number of tourists are rising again. So um, 
So Hamburg tourism doesn't have a river tourism strategy. The Elbe is just, you know, they take it where it fits into their other strategies. And um, the, the offer, as I said, is well developed, and, um, but the tourism flows are spread really unevenly. Uh, many of you have, have been with us to the old country, you know, the fruit orchard area um, with Monica, our stakeholder, and um, there on the weekends it's so um, overcrowded and so many people come with their own cars that many of these little towns are really fed up with tourists or with, with the, you know, mainly with the cars and, you know, the, the traffic that all the tourism or the day trippers bring to the area. So, and also then there are other areas that could take more people, but which are also very badly connected to Hamburg. So there are no public transport or no, no good public transport. So this is actually our, our situation. And um, we, our, we are star cities, we discovered that um, things can be done differently, of course, by all your um, good practices. And um, we were inspired um, by the Vlatava River, which was a next to a good practice um, from um, Czechoslovakia. Um, they presented us with a river strategy and they said, okay, we are developing the river together with um, the DMOs along the river and we, are create, we have created some sort of a brand, and um, they, they said that this is quite, quite a good way to, to, to promote the river together and to develop the river tourism together. So um, this was one um, good practice that inspired us, and also, of course, the Bande River DMO. Um, they have a joint action plan, which is um, much more than we have. Jens um, only represents one side of the Elbe from Hamburg, and. The other side is, well, it's very different, and so there is no real connection, and so we, we decided, okay, we would like to bring the album together more and to develop tourism together. And I must say this, uh, that the Star City project was probably the first time, or maybe not the first time, but, you know, we have seen, we have, we have connected the, peop the, the DMOs from both sides of the Elbe. I, I, Jens, maybe correct me, I don't think you have talked much with Monica from, from the other side of Hamburg before. So this is uh, one really positive effect that we have brought people together to speak about the Elbe River, um, which uh, people who haven't talked, haven't been sitting together on a regular basis. So our stakeholder meetings, we have brought them together and um, we have, um, we want to, our wish is that we could establish something like a, a strategy, development strategy for the river. So, and our way to achieve this is that we are, we have just started last year, we have started a process, process um, which was initiated by the OECD actually, who looked at our region and said, oh, you're so fragmented, you should work together better. And, and we have, in the field of tourism, we have started um, a tourism development concept, which will be finished next year. So this is why I can't really report any results yet. We are right in the middle of this process. Um, this concept will be for, of course, for all of Hamburg metropolitan region, not just the Elbe River. And um, we will, we expect this to be then the new strategic framework for our touristic cooperation in Hamburg metropolitan region. And we hope that we can, we manage to implement the Elbe into this concept so that we will have some basis to work for our uh, future cooperation along the Elbe and to, to deepen this future cooperation. <clears throat> Oops. So the current status is that we have had an intensive analysis of our region, the strengths and weaknesses, the usual SWOT analysis, and it confirms, of course, that water and outdoor and cycling, you know, the Elbe cycle path, which, which runs along the Elbe, offer great opportunities, also walking to some extent in our region. Mobility, connectivity is a big issue, maybe the biggest issue that we have in tourism um, in our region that we have to solve somehow, because as I said, the tourism flows, connectivities, too many cars, regions who say, please, no more. <laughs> We don't want any more tourists, and we don't know how to. And, and, and you know the traffic jams on the motorways on the weekends. So it's a really big issue that we have to solve. And um, of course, another big issue is um, sustainability. 
which is for all, I think the DMO to, uh, colleagues will, will confirm this, is, is a big issue for everyone now in tourism. So um, this will also be a leading, like a leading principle for us, will, I think will be um, sustainability. So, but um, uh, the next steps, um, and there's a meeting today actually um, about this, is that um, we have developed um, seven fields of action, or eight fields of action for, for the tourism, touristic development. And um, today we are, they are discussing um, some project proposals from our consultant. So we have, we have had several meetings together with all, they are like 35 stakeholders of, um, in Hamburg to, uh, metropolitan region. And we have a working group and we have met and several times and, and smaller, of, of course, also in a smaller group. Um, and today they are discussing uh, the first proposals of strategic projects that we want to do actually um, over the next years in order to um, also not just have a, pro have a strategic concept for, you know, to put in your, in, in your cupboard and forget about it, but we want to do something. And we hope, of course, that the Elbe River might be a pilot region to try out, some, for example, some mobility projects, but we don't know yet. Um, we will know more by the end of the year, unfortunately. Um, I can't really report anything more than this. Ah, and Christoph, you said uh, we also have a pilot action. I didn't put anything on this um, on the on the slides. Maybe I can add that um, we are at the moment. Um, yeah, our pilot action is the um, um, was uh, influenced by the Water Museum of Venice. The next tour, um, good practice, and um, we are not, we have had these fe this festival of industrial heritage for ten years in Hamburg metropolitan region, and we want to um, um, yeah develop this festival into like more we call it museum. It's a, more like a working title, but we want to to establish um, a digital attractive digital offer. So at the moment we are we are starting to to rebuild our websites. Uh, two days ago, we had a, a film team in uh, two towns along the Elbe, in Geestacht and Launburg. Launburg, you know, also know where, and Geestacht, also the French team knows, also knows Geestacht, where they have uh, industrial heritage routes. And um, we are filming them now and integrating the films on the website, and they can also be used for, um, for social media, where, um, where film, film is also very important. So. Um, this is what we're doing there, and also we will do a podcast and, and some other measures. So um, this is also underway, but not yet finished. So maybe this is <laughs> for you, for you <laughs> to know what we're doing there. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Katja Butina. I come from Regional Development Agency of Ljubljana urban region from Slovenia. Uh, for a little presentation, this is Slovenia and our central region. Uh, our agency united 25 municipalities, territory of a oh, little over 2,000 kilometers. Uh, we have population 505,000 and in Ljubljana and her surrounding uh, 300,000. Mm, our project area, we have three zones. Mm, the first one, uh, the blue one, is the river Ljubljanica. Uh, the second zone of the project area is Ljubljansko Barje and some surroundings. And the third zone are all the municipalities which lie in the Ljubljansko Barje, Ljubljana Marshes Nature Park. So for some parts, we also, the all municipalities, not just the nature park was our project area. Uh, some introduction, as you already probably know, Ljubljana is one of the smallest European capitals. Our river, Ljubljanica, uh, it has really nice bridges and picturesque cold city center embankments, which are, which are one of the Ljubljana's most notable landmarks. Uh, the river of Ljubljanica, um, before she reaches the city Ljubljana, the up picture, uh, 
runs across Ljubljana Marsh Nature Park, which is a protected wetland and a nature site 2000, the down picture. Uh, our agency unites 25 municipalities. Uh, Ljubljanica flows through four municipalities and seven of them are in the area of Ljubljana Marsh Nature Park. Uh, selected study zone area car covers around 27 and 8 kilo square kilometers, like I said, seven, um, seven municipalities. And a large share of our zone 3 study area is Ljubljana Marsh Nature Park, which is about 160 kilometers. Uh, maybe some pictures about our river landscape. On this uh, slide you can see um, some photos of river in the city center. So um, the center of Ljubljana, the river landscape, landscape is urbanized. Uh, in some parts of uh, municipality of Vrknika and Podpec, the river land is partly urbanized. And the other parts of a study uh, area, especially within the Ljubljana marshes, are uh, nature parts. So here's some pictures how it is. No. Uh, just maybe some words about the history of the river. Mm, the left photo is uh, Ljubljanica today. Uh, the left down photo, you can see the prehistoric pile dwellings. Uh, this area of nature park was, uh, was also in Neolithic. Uh, people lived there in villages like this. In municipality of Ik, we uh, prepared a few years ago a project for UNESCO uh, partnership of these uh, prehistoric uh, pile dwellings. You can see in the middle uh, how it looks like in 1957. This is a beach for swimming at Spitza. Maybe I can show you how it looks Spitza today. Uh, the, the right bottom picture is Spitza today. And how it was when people could swim. Now swimming is not possible in the river. Uh, let, write up uh, some regulation and deepening of the riverbed and uh, traditional boating games at Spitza in 1905. Uh, based on uh, Star City's activities and workshops, seminars, good practices, um, and also other activities and our stakeholders meeting during the first phase of project, uh, we put two actions in our action plan. Uh, first action is preparation of contents, contents and necessary documentation for the establishment of the main entry point in Ljubljansko Barje Nature Park. Uh, we will prepare the documentation for the um, uh, spatial plan for the municipality. I will talk about this later. Also, the, uh, the phase two of this project, the establishment of this new main entry point was, uh, was is, not was, is one of the uh, priority um, regional projects in regional development plan for the year 2021-2027. To and the other action, uh, which we find out through the project, that is really important because we don't have any strategy of the river. No, the rivers are not included in any of our strategies. Strategies, so as um, Tourism of Ljubljana is preparing the new strategy, new tourism strategy for the whole region. This will be the first strategy for the region. Usually we have strategies for municipalities and for national strategy for 2023 and 2027. And uh, we see the opportunity that we can include uh, also the river tourism management uh, and marketing in this new strategy. Um, of course, uh, oh, both actions was inspired by good practices of other partners. So for action one, you know, we got ins inspired um, by three good practices. Uh, the first one is Water Museum Venice and Kurs Elbe Joint Strategy and Hoyt Il Nature Park. Mm, and for action two, 
joint action plan implemented by Marne River and the Vltava River experience from Nectar, next door partner. I will not present all these uh, good practices, but they really help uh, to, to put our action plan together. Uh, so the first uh, action, preparation of contest and necessary documentation. Um, the main point which we succeed in during the Star City stakeholders meetings is that, that all seven mayors of municipalities which lie in Ljubljansko Barrio Nature Park got consensus at one of our stakeholder meetings and they agreed uh, that Rakova Jelša, this is one part of Ljubljana, which connects urban part with the nature park, I will tell more of later, that this would be the best choice for new entry point. Um, the first steps will be preparation uh, of contents and necessary documentation needed for a project assignment of the municipal detailed spatial plan competition and around and later on you know, a later stage um, they will also uh, establish this uh, main entry point. Um, park also had some more local entry points, but we need one main entry point that we can connect all these um, other points. And the location is uh, walking distance from a new thematic trail. It's near park and ride area, and it's about 800 meters from Ljubljanica River, where uh, is planned a new marina and a new dock to be also built and connect, uh, connect uh, park also by water. Here is the picture of uh, municipal details spatial, spatial plan for this area. This blue is the area for the new entry point. Here is place for marina and new dock. This is river Ljubljanica. Here is new thematic path and on, this is um, highway through Ljubljana. And on this part is park and ride uh, area. So it really connects everything to be a main uh, entry point. Oops. Uh, this is a map of the whole Ljubljansk Kobare Nature Park. You can see we also have, here is one entry point, here is one entry point, here and two here. And this, now I don't know where. Sorry. And here is the place for a new entry point. Now, this is a sketch from Ljubljansko Bari Nature Park. They are also planning to have two buildings uh, for them in a thematic park, but we'll see how at the end will look like. Uh, about implementation, uh, the city of Ljubljana is in charge for the, this action. The action should be finished by spring uh, 2023. Uh, for now, uh, we have several meetings with um, key stakeholders, several meetings about two main actors. This is City, city of Ljubljana and Ljubljansko Bari Nature Park. Like I said, one of the big steps forward is consensus among all seven mayors in the area. and. They finished investment project identification documents, which have all the things that they need to, to go on. A few words also about our action two, inclusion of the river tourism management and marketing in the new tourism strategy for the region. Like I said, we do not have any joint strategy for Ljubljanica. Uh, tourism development or also for other rivers in the uh, region and most of um, valid strategic documents in the region do not address the issue of river tourism directly. Uh, we 
think that the river should have a special place, so uh, we will uh, try to include, and we are already um, connected with Tourism Ljubljana and helping the strategy to include um, river tourism also in this new strategy. Uh, what was done? Mm, they had some regional presentation and meetings with key stakeholders. They prepare state of play analysis. Uh, they have 19 interviews on field, visited 20 touristic points, 14 online questionnaires, and they are preparing now an analytical part of the strategy, formulating key strategic goals, uh, and in October they are planning first uh, strategic workshop for the implementation of new strategy. Strategy should be done by the end of the year. I hope it will be, we'll see. Thank you.